so change is constant when the change is constant and manning's equation there is a relation we are knowing that it is a c and n that is a c is equals to 1 by n r is to 1 by 6 otherwise we can use here directly the manning's equation also okay so from that we will uh, further move then q will be area that is as it is into velocity velocity will be now 1 by n into r is to 1 by 6 into root of r s that is a change is one and for the c we have converted from the relation c is equals to 1 by n r s to 1 by 6 so relation is as a by n into r s to 2 by 3 into s s to 1 by 2 now just uh, we will put up the values over here so by putting the values over here we get the relation as area as a 5 into 2 as usual divided by a uh, small n that is a 0 0.002 into r as a 1 point triple 1 raised to power as a 2 third that is a by taking r as outside that is r is 1 by 2 raised to 1 uh, plus 1 by 6 it is a 2 third into the channel bed slope as a 1 by 1000 raised to 1 by 2 we get the value for the q as a 16.96 meter cube per second this is a, a total discharge then the small q that is a discharge per unit width that is a q by b that q by b will be 16.95 that is a total q that is a capital q we can say divided by the base width of b that is a five it is the value as a 3.392 meters cube per second that is then if you have if you want to calculate the yc that in that case we can use the relation yc is equals to yc cube is equals to q square by g or yc is equals to q square by g raised to one third so by putting the values for the q as a 3.392 square upon g as a 9.81 raised to one third we get the value for the critical depth as 1.055 meter why we have calculated those parameters because those are essentially required to find out the specific energies at both the sections so now we are knowing the critical flow depth that is 1.055 meters then the minimum specific energy e minimum we are knowing that it is related to the critical depth as a 3 by 2 times it is e minimum or you see we can say you see is equals to 1.5 times the yc that is a critical flow depth so that is equals to 3 by 2 into 1.055 that is equals to 1.5825 meters so that is a, a minimum specific energy we got now now for the uh, normal product for normal product we are knowing that the specific energy e is equals to y plus v square by 2g y is given to us already they had given but the v is not given to us the velocity is not given to us so velocity will be 1 by n into r s to 2 third s raised to 1 by 2 that is by manning's equation so putting the values over here that is n as a 0 0.02 r as a 1 point triple 1 which you have calculated rest to 2 third as a power and the channel bed slope as a 1 as to 1000 rest to 1 by 2 so we get the uh, velocity over there and then uh We'll, uh, we'll put up the values in the specific energy that is e is equals to y as 2 plus the v square that is a velocity we used to get here as a 1.696 it's a square divided by 2g that is a 2 into 9.81 so we get the specific energy at the normal flow depth as a 2.147 meters so now we we got the specific energy e before the hum that is for the normal product and also we got the minimum specific energy and we are knowing that the height of the hum is nothing but the specific energy e at the normal product minus the minimum specific energy so h is equals to e minus e minimum putting the values e is 2.147 that we have calculated and this is 2.147 and e minimum that is a 1.5825 so we got the height of the hump that is a 0 0.5645 meters it means that by knowing those parameters we were able to find out the height of the hump and this is the maximum height of the hump if we are going to have the high hump height more than this value in that case there will be the 
condition that the flow condition flow will not be sustained further so this is about this example the next one we will go for the statement is for the purpose of a discharge measurement means uh, there is a condition that the in the channel we want to measure the discharge passing through the channel the channel section uh, where the width of a channel that is for a rectangular channel is a reduced gradually from 3 meters to the 2 meters means for the measurement of the discharge the width of a rectangular channel is reduced gradually from 3 meters to 2 meters it means that here at this section the width is a 3 meters perpendicular to that we have to look for and at the hump there is a reduced width that is a 2 meter and the floor is raised by 0.3 meters means delta h that is h is given to us it is a 0.3 meter at the given section we can say then the approaching the depth of the flow is a 2 meter means jay to approach hota tha that is the flow is depth ahe ki apna 2 meter evdi dilele ahe then what rate of flow will be indicated by the drop of 0.15 meter in the water surface elevation at the contacted section म्हणजे विचारलंय काय आपल्याला तर डिस्चार्ज क्यू विचारलेला आहे बरोबर दे हॅव आस्ट टू कॅल्क्युलेट द डिस्चार्ज इज एंड डिस्चार्ज विचारले ना हा व्हाट रेट ऑफ द फ्लो विल बी इंडिकेटेड मीन्स द डिस्चार्ज इज आस्ट बाय ड्रॉप ऑफ झिरो पॉइंट फिफ्टीन मीटर इन द वॉटर सर्फेस इलेवेशन म्हणजे काय इथं जो वॉटर सर्फेस इलेवेशन आहे तो वॉटर सर्फेस इलेवेशन या ठिकाणी पॉइंट फिफ्टीन मीटरने रिड्यूस केलेला आहे तर अशी जर का कंडिशन असेल तर त्या केसमध्ये जो काही डिस्चार्ज पास होणार आहे त्या डिस्चार्ज मॅग्निट्यूड काय असेल दॅट इज आस्ट ओव्हर हिअर सो वील सी वन बाय वन दिस इज अ स्केच वी हॅव कन्सिडर्ड सो फॉर द गिव्हन डेटा अँड फॉर द गिव्हन कंडिशन वी कॅन से द फ्लो डेप्थ ऍट द कॉन्ट्रॅक्टेड सेक्शन द कॉन्ट्रॅक्टेड सेक्शन म्हणजे कुठला हंपच्या ठिकाणचा द डेप्थ ऑफ द फ्लो विल बी आता अगोदरची जी फ्लो डेप्थ होती ती टू मीटर्स होती when the approaching the depth of the flow is 2 meter manje approach hone cha agodar manje hi y dilele apnala 2 meter hoti clear now we have to find out the flow depth here that is it will be reduction in the water surface how water surface reduction jala kiti ne jala to apla 0.15 meter ne jala so we have considered over there then floor is raised by 0.3 meters manje ithun evdi depth apli kami jali manje apnala tithe y madun to raised portion cha height reduce karava lagel means that is 2 minus 0.3 minus 0.15 that is equals to 1.55 meter which is nothing but the depth of the flow at the contracted section then the next parameter that is q want to calculate so if q is the discharge flowing through the channel then the specific energy at the upstream section will be e1 is equals to y y plus v square by 2g as usual so by putting the values that is e1 is equals to y1 that is y plus uh, v1 square or this velocity here and the depth we can say so the flow depth is the 2 meter which is given to us that is before the hump that is approaching to the hump so 2 meters plus v square by 2g is there so converting that v to the q that is q is equals to area into velocity so v will be equals to q by a as a square is there it means that v square will be equals to q square by a square 2g as it is q square divided by a square a square is nothing but the b into y channel is a rectangular hai. so area will be b into y it's a square so b is a 3 meter that is a width they had given us that is a 3 meters before the hump and depth of the flow as a 2 meters so 2g into 3 into 2 it's a square that is equals to 2 plus q square upon the summation is 72 into 9 9.81 further we are knowing that the specific energy at the contacted section is a e2 that is the critical one and the flow depth at that condition that is a yc that is a y we have calculated is a 1.55 discharge will be the same that is a q as it is but the area is now going to change 2g will be constant that is a v square by 2g from that 2g will be constant and v square will be equals to q square by a square so a square will be v square into y square or b into y bracket square but the base width is a reduced to the 2 meters here they have given us that is for purpose of discharge measurement 
the width of the rectangular channel is reduced gradually from 3 meters to 2 meters it means that here at this section the width is 2 meters and the product is a critical one that is 1.55 putting the values over here we get the relation as 1.55 plus q square upon 19.22 into 9.81 means we have calculated the specific energy at the section 1 and at the section 2 so here section 1 is for the prior to the hump whereas the section 2 is on the hump itself and we want to calculate the discharge over there no doubt the specific energies will be different one but we have to take the help of that so how we will take the help of that as we are knowing that e1 will be equals to or this specific energy before or prior to the hump will be equals to the critical specific energy or the e2 that is a specific energy at the hump plus the hump height means delta z plus e minimum is equals to e1 so we'll go for that now if there is no loss of the energy then in that case we can say that e1 is equals to that is a specific energy e1 is equals to e2 this specific energy at the critical one that is e2 plus delta z that is h we can say putting the values over there so we get e1 as a 2.0 plus q square by 72 into 9.81 is equals to e2 as 1.55 plus q square upon 19.22 into 9.81 plus that is delta j that is a height of the hump that is a 0 0.3 meter that is a raised floor we can say so we will get uh, the relation as in the simplified form if we will solve this equation we is to get the q square or sorry q is equals to 6 6.21 meter cube per second that is the discharge we are getting for the condition it means that for this example they had asked to calculate the discharge whereas in the previous example they have asked to calculate the hump height here the hump height was given and with respect to that they asked to calculate the discharge now we'll further move for the next part that is a gradually varied flow so already we have discussed about the what does it mean about the gradually varied flow and which conditions are required to have the gradually varied flow okay so for gradually varied flow conditions we are knowing that whenever the gradually varied flow used to exist in that case the variation in the flow parameters are so less over the so long length or over the space we can say so we'll go for its equation firstly that is a dynamic equation we used to talk about so dynamic equation of a gradually varied flow before going to that it is required to have see the assumptions as this is a varied flow no doubt it is a gradually varied flow but it is a, a varied flow so assumptions those are essential or those are the conditions those are assumed for the derivation of that are first one is the changes and manning's equations are equally applicable for the computations it means that though the changes and manning's equations are purely applicable for the uniform flow conditions but in the gradually varied flow they are applicable equally for finding the slope of energy line okay it means that whatever the energy line used to exist for finding its slope that is used to assume it as an Accept for finding that magnitude of the asset, we is to apply we can apply the chasing and manage equations. Second one is that though it is a gradually varied flow, the bottom slope of the channel is a very small or a so small we can say. Next one, the channel is a prismatic, means it's a planet form is not going to change at all. It's a slope, side slope, or slope of the sides, slope of the bed, then a roughness coefficient we can consider. All those parameters are constant throughout the length and space we can say. Next one is the energy correction factor alpha is unity. It means that the velocity distribution in the channel is a, a uniform. That is a condition we can get over here for alpha. Alpha unity keep flow conditions the uniform flow condition ahe manje velocity disturb hot nahi same ahe 
नेक्स्ट द प्रेशर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इन एनी वर्टिकल इज हाइड्रोस्टैटिक म्हणजे जो आपण स्पेसिफिक फोर्स जो म्हणतो त्या स्पेसिफिक फोर्स च्या भाषेमध्ये जर का आपण म्हणायचं म्हटलं तर त्याचं डिस्ट्रीब्युशन जे असणार आहे दॅट डिस्ट्रीब्युशन इज अ हायड्रोस्टॅटिक इट मीन्स दॅट देर इज अ मिनिमम फोर्स और हायड्रोस्टॅटिक फोर्स वी कॅन से ऍट द टॉप अँड देर इज अ सो लेस sorry so less hydrostatic force or a zero force at the top surface of the water and the maximum will be at the bottom that will be goes to rho g h rho g into h that is the height we are going to assume as a y so rho g into y will be the maximum pressure intensity at the bottom of the channel slope and it will be minimum at the top of the channel slope or the, at the top of the water surface next one is that the roughness coefficient is independent of the depth of the flow and it is a constant throughout the channel reach which we have considered for the our observation or for the derivation purpose manje jo kahi apla whatever the roughness coefficient we are going to assume that that roughness coefficient either n or a c that will be the constant throughout the channel section and it is independent on the depth of the flow okay those are uh, the assumptions now just consider that this is an a channel bottom which we are assumed it as an datum then sorry uh, this is a datum from which we have taken the reference point and this is a channel bottom which is a sloping towards the in the x direction this is the x direction we have assumed that means the x axis is assumed parallel to the or longitudinally to the channel bottom itself and the channel bottom slope is indicated by as o okay so it will it will be dz by dx we can say so z is a vertical x will be the horizontal so dz by dx indicates the channel bottom slope then uh, we have assumed that the flow depth as a y and the this arrow indicates that the direction of the flow that is from higher elevation to the lower elevation that is as per the gravity and this is the water surface as due to the gravity there is going to be change in the flow depth but that variation is a so small but there is a change okay so here we are finding that the less depth and here we are finding somewhat larger depth so at the section we have considered that flow depth we are assumed as a y <clears throat> then water surface if we are considering channel bottom itself then from channel bottom the slope of the <clears throat> or change or the variation in the flow depth along the x axis that is a dy by dx is going to indicate the water surface because the variation will be there for the y and it is this variation will be along the x so the dy by dx indicates the water surface elevation or the slope of the water surface we can say then associated velocity head for the section is a v square by 2g and its a variation is assumed as a set that is a dv by dx we can say or the change in the velocity head along the x axis or longitudinal direction is nothing but the s f so those are the usual notations we have assumed there then if we are assuming that a total energy as a h at the section then h will be summation of datum head z flow depth y and the velocity head v square by 2g so this total energy h is equals to v square by 2g plus y plus z we can say then replacing the velocity in terms of the discharge from the known relation that is a v is equals to q by sorry q is equals to av so v will be equals to q by a as there is a square so v square will be equals to q square by a square so this is a q square by a square into 2g plus depth y as it is plus z datum as it is now to have a variation for the flow depth that is a water surface we can say it will be required to differentiate with respect to the x this equation will be required to differentiate with respect to the x that is differentiating each of the term of the above equation with respect to x where x is measured along the channel bottom then we will get the equation as dh by dx that is a differentiation of h with respect to x is equals to d by dx of the first term that is a q square upon twice g a square plus 
d by dx of y that is a dy by dx plus d by dx of a z that is a dz by dx as usual now just to rearranging the terms that is dh by dx is equals to representing the area with respect to the x we can say so b into y there will be there and we can we will be able to differentiate that so for constant discharge q we can say q square by g as a constant the differentiation of the s square will be the minus 2 into a cube we can say that a cube will be in the denominator itself so that minus 2 upon twice g a cube will be there and that power 2 to the our value 2 will get cancels to each other so we'll have the ratio as q square by g a cube into d a by d x plus d y by d x and d z by d x as usual then in the above differential uh, equation we are knowing that d h by d x d h by d x that is a total energy we can say so total energy we have if you have considered total energy then it, it will be asap whereas it will be negative why is it so because with further movement in the direction of the x there is a reduction in the sf so dh by dx is a minus sf also the D, uh, so that is a dz by dx will be a negative one putting those things over there we will have so dz by dx is the slope of the channel bottom and it will be negative because the, with increase in x they are decreasing and dy by dx is the slope of the water surface so with respect to the channel bottom so further rearranging for the dy by dx so we can write in, we can introduce the y term in the dy by dx how is it so by dividing and multiplying this term dy by dx by dy that is dy by dx into dy upon dy so it is rearranging it we get dy by dy into dy by dx so dy by dy into dy by dx that is a rearrangement of the y that is a multiplication and dividation but we are knowing that a by y is nothing but the top with the t so dy by dy is going to indicate the t that is a top width we can say so it will be now it is reduced just to t into dy by dx okay so now putting the values over there so we get minus sf that is the dh by dx as a minus sf is equals to q square by t into g a cube into dy by dx that is in terms of the dy by dx plus dy by dx as it is minus so that is a bed slope that is a dz by dx we have represented over here now taking the common terms outside and so to the uh, left hand side so minus sf plus so will be there if we we'll take the so towards the left hand side it will be minus sf plus so it means that so minus sf will be there towards the left hand side that we are, i have taken here in then from these two terms that is a q square by t ga cube dy by dx plus dy by dx we can take dy by dx as a common so you will take the dy by dx as a common then we will have dy by dx in bracket 1 minus q square t by ga cube 1 will be there for dy by dx and minus q square t by ga cube will be there for this term so ultimately we will have so minus sf upon 1 minus q square t by ga cube is equals to dy by dx when you have to if the dy by dx for soon yeah terms over left hand side like hitler so we will get the equation as a dy by dx is equals to so minus sf upon 1 minus q square t by ga cube and as we are knowing that q square t by ga cube is nothing but the house number so further we will have dy by dx is equals to that is a variation in the flow depth with the x or the longitudinal axis is equals to difference in the base slope and the energy line or their slopes so minus sf divided by 1 minus f r square okay how is it so because q square t by j cube represents the f r square also if the channel is a wide rectangular in that case we get the equation as a dy by dx is equals to 1 minus 
the ratio of y n by y bracket cube upon one minus y c by y bracket cube. That is s o into sorry, I'm divided by dx is equals to s o into numerator one minus y n by y bracket cube upon one minus y c by y bracket cube. This is a further addition we can say in the derivation. So uh, as dy by dx we have derived therein. So minus S F divided by one minus F square upper square. This is the general equation. So this is most applicable one for the uh, further okay. So uh, further part in the sense what whenever there is a change in the uh, water surface and it used to exit for number of the times. And this change is associated with the change in the driving force, that is the gravity force we can say. And gravity force changes whenever there is a change in the slope of the bed. So it means that indirectly it is associated with the, or it will be used for the deducting or finding the energy uh, channel bed slopes. So if you will observe the same from the above equation. From this equation is so minus sf by one minus f r square. Then in that case we can observe that if the dy by dx is a zero, if dy by dx is a zero, it means that numerator has to be zero value. It means that so is equals to sf, <clears throat> and so is equals to sf. It means that in the previous slide we will see so is equals to sf. So SO is equals to SF means both are parallel to each other. SO and SF are parallel to the each other. This is the condition. So whenever this condition is to observe that in that case SO will be equals to SF and they are parallel to each other. It means that the water surface is a parallel to the bottom representing the uniform flow conditions. Isn't it? Manje Jajavis he dogo ek me doganchi value same as nar chatavis compulsorily flow condition apply hi uniform flow condition asna. Isn't it? So on other hand, when the dy by dx is a positive, at the dy by dx positive kadi asnar, the javis is also magnitude he as a picture just as nar. Yes, so is more than as a isn't it? it means a channel bed slope is more than the sf we can say then water surface is a rising in nature isn't it when j there is compulsory condition kaisner yes so dy by dx ha positive apla manjis kaisner hai ha ratio purna pane apla positive asnar hai kutla so by sf upon 1 minus f r square or so by sf upon 1 minus q square t upon g a cube means q square t by g a cube or f r square must be less than one and sf must be less than so and if this is the condition in that case there is to exist a backwater surfaces or the rise in the water surface or water elevation we can say means yes kitho ji flow depth aste ti flow depth hi barobar vadat vadat challi aste but in the other hand whenever dy by dx is a negative if this ratio is a negative, then it it indicates the falling water surfaces. Manje, kya condition la, jhaavad is dy by dx ha negative as nar, kya condition la, compulsorily, the water surface as nar hai, to falling gradients as nar, meaning slope ha negative as nar. This is the condition. And with respect to that now, we are going to classify further the channel slopes and the flow profiles, which is essential or which is most important from the examinations so further now we are going to discuss the classification of the channel bottom slopes and for that the basis is the dynamic equation of the gvf that is a dy by dx is equals to so minus sf divided by 1 minus q square t by g a q or in the further analysis so minus sf divided by 1 minus f r square so the classification is based on the magnitude of the this variation of the flow depth that is a y with along the x that is a dy by dx and the first channel type is the critical channel slope so for the critical channel slope the bed slope is a critical one 
now the bare slope is a critical it means that the normal flow depth or the flow depth is a critical flow depth where if the flow depth is a critical depth in that case it means that the critical flow occurs at the normal flow depth ja vedes critical channel slope asnar tya vedes normally jo flow honar to flow ha compulsory critical depth la honar manje त्या कंडिशन मधला जो अपना नॉर्मल फ्लो है तो क्रिटिकल फ्लो दिस इज द कंडिशन दट इज क्रिटिकल फ्लो अकर्स एट द नॉर्मल फ्लो डेप्थर एज फॉर द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट दट इज फॉर द माइल्ड स्लोप चैनल द सेकेंड चैनल कंडिशन इज द माइल्ड कंडिशन का जो अपना माइल्ड स्लोप तो माइल्ड स्लोप हाजेव जो बॉटम स्लोप दैट बॉटम स्लोप इज लेस दैन द क्रिटिकल जर का क्रिटिकल कंडीशन समझा टाइम बीइंग क्रिटिकल कंडीशन ही अपनी बरबर बॉटम इंडिकेट करते हैं हॉरिजेंटल है टाइम बीइंग बींगी ना इफ दिस इज द क्रिटिकल वन इन दैट केस द माइल्ड इंडिकेट्स दैट देर इज अट इंक्रीज पॉजिटिव डिरेक्शन लगे का पॉजिटिव डिरेक्शन लाइल तो शंबर टे नॉर्मल प्रोडक्ट अपनी क्रिटिकल पेक्षा जास्त है बिकॉज फॉर द क्रिटिकल प्रोडक्ट वू हेड सीन दैट there is a minimum specific energy and below which there is a no flow can occur sorry below that specific energy can't be reduced and velocity will be the critical one and power number is 1 it means that if we are going to have the mild slope in that case there is a increase in the flow depth and the flow will be the now sub critical flow flow to depth wadli apli critical peksha means from the specific energy curve we can say that Above the critical flow, or above the critical condition, flow is a subcritical, and the depth is a more than critical depth. So y n is greater than y c, which is further related or further indicating that the subcritical flow occurs at the normal flow depth. Okay. Then the next channel is is the steep channel, or the channel slope as a steep channel slope. steep channel slope means that there is a increase in the channel slope if there is a increase in a channel slope then in that case obviously there is a increase in the flow depth means now from the specific energy curve we can say that the flow or the flow velocity which is going to is going to move further downward from the critical point where depth is going to reduce if the flow depth is going to reduce it means that the normal depth is a below the critical Or the critical flow depth is more than normal flow depth. Then, so, steep channel slope la compulsory flow depth, flow chain depth just na ra normal flow depth just as na ra hai. Ki borobar critical pressure kamy as na ra hai. Jo khali as na ra hai. Mujhe normally jo flow hona hai, to critical flow depth just khali as na. Then, so normally flow occurs at the super critical condition, or the super critical flow occurs at the normal condition. This is the phenomenon where regarding the channel bottom slope. the channel bottom slope is a greater than the critical channel bottom slope it is so is a greater than yes in the next one is the horizontal channel slope or the horizontal channel bottom we can say for that the bed slope will be zero a purely horizontal line will be there and for that the normal flow depth used to exist at the infinite dimension so whenever there is a horizontal channel surface in that case there will be a increase in a flow depth due to the driving force of the uh, section driving force of the flow which is at the section or which is due to the uh, flow which is occurring in the previous section from the horizontal one manje horizontal channel section cha agodar cha je channel section asnar ahe titun jo apna flow honar ahe either that will be the mild steep or critical तिथला जो ड्राइविंग फोर्स बरबर फ्लो पुढ़े पर हॉर्जेंटल कंडीशन आ फ्लो ची डेप है इनफाइनाइटन यूनिफॉर्म फ्लो हा सस्टेन हो बिकॉज देर इज वी कैन प्रिडिक्ट द कंडीशन सो दी कैन से दैट द युनिफॉर्म फ्लो कैंट बी सस्टेन फॉर द हॉर्जेंटल चैनल स्लो फेर एज इन द आडवर्स चैनल स्लो The bare slope is a less than zero. The reverse scale, ultra channel slope scale. In that case, y n is imaginary. What is that? Normal flow depth will be imaginary, and it also can't sustain the uniform flow conditions. 
so broadly we can say the channel slopes are classified or categorized into the five types critical mild steep horizontal and adverse with respect to the slope of the flow depth and the governing conditions for the normal flow depth and in that the horizontal and the adverse conditions can't sustain the uniform flow whereas the for critical channel slope the normal flow occurs at the critical depth for mild subcritical flow occurs at the normal depth and for a steep supercritical flow occurs at the normal depth okay so those are the conditions or the classifications of the channel bottom slopes now we'll see the next part that is the uh, in detail that is how they looks like that is for the mild slope how it is to be steep slope means how it is to be critical means how it is to be horizontal and our adverse so on uh, the first sketch indicates this sketch indicates the mild slope so here we are finding that the channel slope in the direction of the flow is a so less whereas in the steep slope the channel slope is increased now as with respect to the mild we can say in the steep slope the channel slope has been increased if you take the slope of this line with respect to the x is more than that of the this previous case then for the critical one we can say for critical one the channel slope is further reduced than the mild condition so mild condition la jo apna channel jo slope ahe त्या पेक्षा क्रिटिकल कंडिशन मध्ये इथं हा आपण कमी केलेला आहे हिअर वर ऑब्झर्विंग दॅट हिअर द चॅनल स्लोप इज लेस दॅन दॅट ऑफ द माइल्ड वन हर एज फॉर हॉरिझॉन्टल द चॅनल इज अ प्युअरली हॉरिझॉन्टल मीन्स एस ओ इज अ झिरो ओके हिअर एस ओ इज अ झिरो अँड देन फॉर द ॲडवर्स इट इज इन अ रिव्हर्स फॅशन बिकॉज इन द रेग्युलर चॅनल्स वन टू थ्री वी हॅड सीन दॅट दे आर स्लोपिंग डाऊनवर्ड बट फॉर द ॲडवर्स इट इज अ स्लोपिंग अपवर्ड ओके so it is a, a sloping upward direction we can say so uh, here for adverse slope this is an exactly a reverse